the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for that open uh, sign this morning. Do pray, uh, Lord God, forgive us uh, this day. I heard Sister Nancy say this would be a good time to lay in bed this morning. Amen. But I thank God that I'm here. You know, as she was saying, I think about right now, I took some melon from a cold. I had to take some other melon. I took the child late. And I tell you, I slept hard right now. And I woke up this morning, I just did not want to move. <laughs> but I thank God that it wasn't the alarm clock or anything that or the alarm on my phone that woke, really woke me up, but it was the mercy of God. Yes. And you know, sometimes we don't just don't realize it. A lot of times when we'll sleep, how we how, how we 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 just laying there and not know anything that's going Jesus. on. But God with His good self, Amen. allow us to see another day. So I'm so thankful for this day. I, I have a verse that uh, scripture I want to read here, and my everyone that volunteer want to lead us in prayer this morning. Open our devotion, Amen. 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 Come from the beginning of Psalm 119 and begin at verse 33. Psalm 119 and verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statue, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandment, for there do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimony and unto thy covenant. Turn away my eye from the whole vanity and quicken thy me in thy ways. Stab me thy word unto my unto thy servant and he who is devoted to thee. Turn away thy reproach, which I will fear, for thy judgment are good. Behold, I have long after thy precept, quicken me in thy righteousness. I read Psalm 19, the beginning of Psalm 19, verse 33 to 39. Uh, for our devotion read this morning, I ask you to know the word of prayer. I know it be, because God will, I know it's good for you. Now, that's the one that uh, uh, volunteer and get our devotion prayer this morning. Amen. Something had been, been, been bothered. 
bugged me a long time. And I like that verse, Lord, teach me that special and that way. No, I don't care how long uh, we've been in church, how long we've been doing it, and especially living in a world like this. We need the Lord sometimes. Yeah. Teach, you, teach me your commandment. Now, do the standard of pleasing to you, Father God. If I do those things, then I know everything that is all in place. So I, I often say, Lord, teach me. Tell me. Show me what it is that you put not in my head but in my heart. Teach me the way that I should go in. And, you know, and I say this all the time. A lot of time when you I said a long body said you have plenty of time to think and think about what the Lord had done for you, what he will really do for you. Now think about just how good God had been to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 there was time that you might could, uh, like, like I said last night, I, I took some cold milk and I took the other pill and it just really put me to sleep. I mean, <laughs> all sleep and I, I could have kept on sleeping this morning. But I thank God for what He done, because you know, I, I, there are so many people that aren't able to get what I need when I get sick. So there are a lot of people that not even able to do that. That uh, had to go through the pain and, and, and suffering, not able to have the right medicine and stuff. So not on that. So I just thank God for everything He does for me, and I give Him the praise, and I give Him the glory. And, and, and when I wake up in the morning, just. I don't have to open the door. I, I don't have to even look out the window. But when I see the sunlight, Man. Man. just come from the bedroom Man. window. When I just see the sunlight. I already didn't know it's a new day. And God didn't have to do it for me, but it was His grace. He grew that He loved me just that. But for me to see another day, then the first day I said, Lord, I thank you right. for Lord. this day. Yes. Lord, I pray you for this day. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go with you throughout the day to protect me. Amen. Amen. Well, God be good to me. I don't know about you now. God be good to me. I, I just can't not say, even in my fault, even in my downfall, I still got to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Amen. So you know the word, friend, that to continue to pray for me that yes, I be able to keep it steady, do the Jesus. thing that he commanded me to do. Amen. 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 Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you all the days of my life.
though they're here at home at this time, um, just pray for all of us. We need prayer in a time like this. Amen. And um, Amen. put aside whatever's dead weight is holding you. Jesus. And let the Lord Jesus. use you. And he'll Amen. use you. And that means, like I said, you don't have to be the loudest one in the room. Amen. You can leave from behind. But leave from wherever. Leave from that wherever God had placed you. Amen. He has given all of us, from the youngest to the oldest, something to do. Do what Amen. you're uh, commissioned to do. Amen. God Amen. 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 It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that's what he said. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how Just think about if we were in a place that all we did was run and fall. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. But God has not only come here and be so look so nice this morning, be so calm and, and not be 
seen the word of that man. <coughs> but we have something to praise God for. Not only pray to God, we have something to pray to God for. Yeah. Those people are going through something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we look around us, we are facing war in it. Young people killing each other. Mm -hmm. Every day they are killing. Yes. We have something to pray to God for to allow us to be here. Just think of one thing that knows two sons and death in one week. Jesus. We have something to praise God for. That's right. I heard some fun say, I'm like her, I, I tell somebody yesterday, I've never been one that could jump up and shout. Mm -hmm. All right. And even in the world, even when I love learning to dance and stuff, and, uh, uh, I, I like baseball. My favorite player here at home, you don't see me jumping here. Uh, you know, I get happy, yeah. but yeah. I never want me that over much, but you know what? I love the Lord. So we have something to praise God for. If we just think we look at the word that we live, our government is seen to be a clown show. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you know the Lord is the time that call on him because you cannot put your trust in man. And I tell people all the time, when you say a praise up, you're like putting the man in the bank. Mm -hmm. you, you already got your bank account signed up with God. Just say a praise up to everybody. And when you need something, you can call heaven and you, you can get something back. This is a prayer attack. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and since Nancy said we woke up that morning, that's enough to say praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. God is good. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, He is good. Amen. And if He wasn't good, you wouldn't know anything about it. Amen. Amen. But He is good. Amen. He knows what we need. And, and the, the Bible is fulfilling itself. Yes. It should be in surprise to us, Pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Bible said these things will happen. But it said, be not this man. Whatever. Yes. Whatever. Yes. So let's tell you one thing. We got time to pray. Yes. We had the time to give God the praise. Yes. I don't know what we may have done. What we had error in. You know, sometimes the Lord, before I put in the prayer, forgive me. What you do, child? I don't know. But yes. I, did, I may have did something. Mm. But in the other time that we need, give God praise. Yes. Give him a praise now because yes. only reason, I believe the only reason that God had not came back yet, Jesus hadn't came back yet, because he still has some people here. Mm. So saints, they're still praying. Lord, yes. hold back yes. just a little bit longer. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Give us just a little yes. bit more time. Yes. All right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Another day that the Lord has Another day. Amen. given Amen. us to get it right. To get yes. it right. So we ought to thank God for thank you, each God. day. As Deacon May was talking about what's going on in Israel and in Gaza, I was thinking the other day as I was riding off, I said, you know, there are those that are in the Middle East, uh, Israel and Gaza, they're still going about their daily routine. Mm -hmm. So going, uh, going to the doctor the other day, picked up, picked up uh, uh, this child or that child and affected that they are riding along with the threat of bombs mm -hmm. being unleashed at any time. And you know, we're blessed. We're it's blessed. Yeah, we don't have that threat. But we haven't had that effect of it. But we need to understand that each and every day, someone is trying to de develop a long range missile to reach the United States. So we ought to thank God for things as well as they are. And the reality of it is, if we was in the bombardment that they are in, we would be totally lost. Yes. Yes. Our faith would really be tested there. Thank you, just how strong, we just how much we trust in the Lord. But I will tell you one thing. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord.
announcements by Sister Jaden Braswell. Then I pass a brief by our pastor and the welcome by Sister Julia Braswell. to be in the house of the Lord one more time, another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us, and I'm so glad to be here this morning. First off, I, I want to apologize to those uh, on pre-conference call and those in-house because I was working on an audio problem that had affected the uh, microphones uh, in-house here, and which caused pre-conference call, which caused you to have a little disruption during the uh, uh, Sunday school, and it was as simple as somebody had inadvertently pressed a button on the PA on the uh, soundboard that cut off uh, all the stuff for one mic. But we got that resolved. Uh, I put that in my mental notes that the next time that ever happens, so it won't take us long to resolve that problem. But we thank God today for allowing us to be here. With that being said, um, also, uh, at least I forget, please make a note that on the fifth Sunday, uh, Trustee uh, uh, Nancy Wooten will be teaching Sunday school on the fifth Sunday. So please join in. Uh, if you have free conference call for uh, Trustee <coughs> Wooten teaching the Sunday school, I know that uh, there have been uh, there have been some requests, and uh, so we. So we are going to be responsive, and uh, I know that uh, Anderson Chapel, please join in on the fifth Sunday at 10 a.m. for Sunday School. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned to those that gathered yesterday, uh, please take time today and take a few photos and look at what you're sitting in here today. Because if God be willing, when we come back on the first Sunday, you will see something drastically different on the inside of this sanctuary. Amen. So you might want to take a picture to remember, a historical picture. I know that uh, Deacon uh, and I was supposed to get with Brother Dancy about taking some pictures That's right. for historically for the church. And, uh, and even as we go along with the progress of what's happening, as if you have not heard. If you have not heard and if you have, are not already excited, please get excited because we're starting the first phase of our renovation. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. A long time coming, but God has opened the door. We will have the roof replaced and we will do the interior ceiling. We are, we are, we're going to blow the roof off of here and put a new one on. How does that sound? Amen. Amen. We want to 
Lord. We are excited to see what the Lord will do, will allow us to do, and from that point, we will move forward with other phases of our renovation. But we thank God for his grace and his mercy. Again, as a reminder, we the first Sunday, Lord's willing, we will be back in here for our church anniversary with the Reverend uh, J.R. Neal, pastor of uh, St. Monica uh, Missionary Baptist Church, and this uh, choir and congregation will be along with us in service on that day. So please lift them up in prayer. Come together, get excited. You know, the Lord has blessed us. Yesterday was a rainy day. Today the sun is coming out. The wind is blowing a little bit. But we ought to be excited. I know you're excited on the inside. you got to be excited on the inside because of, of what the Lord is doing. Uh, we all are not emotional beings. We don't get excited over certain things. But I'm excited about this. And usually I don't get excited about certain things. But I'm just thankful because God is allowing us to be able to come together and to do this. Amen, amen. I want to thank all of our Sunday school leaders, uh, the adults, the, the youth, uh, the participants, and all for the continuous studying of God's word. As a reminder, on November the 4th, on November the 4th, Saturday, November the 4th, we will have our business meeting at 11 a.m. on that day, but we ask that you will arrive at 10 a.m. so you can do a walkthrough and see what the Lord has allowed us to do Amen. during this first phase of renovation. And after our business meeting, then we hope to have a little fellowship on Amen. here on the church ground. So that is November the 4th. We are fastly approaching the end of the year. 2023 is about gone. But the Lord has blessed us and kept us. Amen. We have lost many loved ones along the way. But we still thank God for all that he has done. And we're looking forward to 2024. I don't know if the Lord will allow me to see 2024 or not. But one thing I do know, that all my appointed days, I'm going to give him the glory and honor and praise for what he has done and what he continues to do. I may not praise him the way you want me to praise him. I may not dress like you want me to dress. I may not talk like you want me to talk. But let everything... Everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Yes. And you ought to be able to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord. One more time. Yes. Another day that the Lord has blessed yes. you. We're so thankful that uh, my wife and uh, daughter has joined in with the choir this morning. Yes. They are shorthanded today, yes. but they have stepped in. And uh, they'll lend their voices into the midst this morning. So just continue to pray with and for this choir. Pray for our deacons. Pray for our mothers. Pray for our trustees. Pray for all the officers and members of Anderson Chapel. Because we are in this together. We can't do it by ourselves. We've got to come together. We've got to work together. We've got to pray together. And ask the Lord to lead us and guide us and protect us along this way. Amen and amen. 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 At this time, we have the welcome by Sister uh, Jelaya Braswell.
God, we come to you on this morning, oh God, just to tell you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, we come to you as the choir said, asking you, oh God, to give us your Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh God, give it to us right now, oh God. Oh God, touch our hearts, oh God. Oh God, touch our minds, oh God. But through it all, oh God, we ask that you strengthen us, oh God. Oh God, make us a vessel, oh God to do your will and to do your work that you have set for each and every one of us, oh God. Oh God, we thank you right now, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for the ushers, oh God, who will usher your congregation, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for the choir, oh God, who will sing your songs of Zion, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for the man of God, oh God, who will bring forth your word, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for listening ears, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for open minds, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for our hearts, oh God, to receive your word, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you on this morning, oh God. Oh God, oh God, we thank you for each and every person, oh God, upon the sound of my voice, oh God. Oh God, we pray that all we do give you glory, honor, and praise, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we
But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Thank <laughs> you. 
bless in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
declared hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Amen. How many of you this morning love to praise his name? Amen. How many of you know this morning that Jesus is Lord? Amen. How many of you know that he woke you this morning? Amen. He's got me on your way. How many of you know that he's worthy of all praises? So give God a hand clap for praise for another day that the Lord has kept us. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, God, for this choir this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They are short-handed with those who stepped in to help them out this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for stepping in to help the choir this morning. And I looked around, and they even fell into the color scheme. Didn't even know that they was joining them this morning. But amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Isn't it good to be here this morning? Amen. Isn't it good to be alive? Yes. You know, I, I, I just, I was at work last night and uh, they gave us the news of a, co a colleague that had passed. I did not know that he had passed. He used to work with them. We were still, we were still working, but uh, his pancreatic cancer came back and he passed. And it just broke my heart this morning to know. And I did not know he'd been dead for some three weeks. And it, it, it's kind of heartbreaking to know those people that you work with. And then all of a sudden, one day they're here, next day they're gone. Amen. This reminds us that life is short. Amen. And it behooves us, church, to get our life in all. Amen. It does not matter whether you are six. Or 60. Or 96. It's time, church, to stop playing. For Christ is coming back. He's coming back and looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back and looking for individuals who are serious, who trust in him, who have committed their lives to him. He's not coming back looking for uh, those individuals that have never sinned. But he's coming back and looking for those that have acknowledged him as Lord and Savior. And through his grace and mercy, we have been justified. Through his death and resurrection, we have been made whole. So whenever you think that you've got to be perfect, there's none perfect. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself said that there's none good but one. And that's God. So we ought to get our lives together. Turn aside the hatred, the malice, and say, Lord, forgive them. And if you want to say they know not what they do. Because many times we don't know what we do. But I'm so glad this morning that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Those of you with your Bibles, we invite that you will turn with us to the book of Jude. To the book of Jude. Those of you that may not be familiar, it is right before the book of Revelation. Right before the book of Revelation. Another book many of us don't like to turn to. But uh, the book of Jude. The one letter one chapter, if you will, short in length, but you say what he had to say. You know, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say and move on. I'm going to say what I have to say this morning and move on. Pray with us. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. And then verses 24 and 25. Verses 1 through 4. 24 and 25. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father 
and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I have, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 24 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the seed in joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. 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 Us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come again to say thank you. thank you. Father, I thank you for another day that you have blessed us with and another opportunity that you allow us to stand in behind the sacred desk. Father, I acknowledge that I'm not able myself, but Father, we pray that I will send the preacher, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that it may use my tongue to preach your word, use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let the same spirit abide with these your children as someone may profess Jesus as Lord of their life. This we do pray, we give you the glory and honor and the praise, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the seed and joy to the only wise God and Savior, to glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Now unto him that is able to keep you. We want to talk with you just as the Lord has allowed. He's keeping me. He's keeping me. You know, the interesting thing, as I was reading verses 24 and 25 again, I thought about the fact I was coming out of my house just the other day and I took a step onto the steps coming down and somehow or another sister I lost a little bounce and if it had not been for that handle on that door that as I was slipping I was able to grab that handle I would have fell down those steps and it would not have been pretty if I had fell down those steps because the reality of it is the individual that used to live in that house she fell down those same very same steps and broke her back so I know that it would not have been free for me but whenever I was able to grab hold of that handle I said Lord I thank you for keeping me from falling you know isn't it good to know that he's keeping you? Yes. Isn't it good to know that he's still blessing you? Yes. Isn't it good to know that he is all around you, wrapped with his, wrapped his loving arms around us to protect us and to keep us? The book of Jude, a short book, one that it's not even broken down into chapters. It just has 25 verses. But yet, Jude fell it upon himself to write this letter, to set some situations and scenarios that was going on right. Jude himself, whose given name 
actually was Judas. But because to keep down the confusion of Judas the traitor, mm -hmm. Judas the one who betrayed Christ, Jude, Judas became Jew. Just so that you will know the difference. You know, many times in families, you know, you have you have a uh, you have Big John and Little John. You have Big Charles and Little Charles. Sometimes you have Ray and Ray Ray. All just so that you'll know the difference in whom you're speaking about. But here is you. He opens his letter by saying, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. It's very interesting, Brother Dennis, that he used that phrase, a servant of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he further goes to say, the brother of James. So, we know that James was the brother of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jude could have said, Jude, the brother of Jesus. You know how we are. You know, we get caught up sometimes and we like to talk about the people that we know. We like to name drop. We like to tell who our family members are. We like to tell, even sometimes right now, to help people to understand, we'll say, I'll say myself, I'm not going to say we, I'll say, I'll say, James Zion attended that church. Oh yeah, I know him. <laughs> But we get some names help us place people in situations. Amen. But instead of Jews saying, the brother of Jesus, he says, a servant. To break it down a little more, he actually said, a bond servant. A slave to Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm the brother of James. Yes. James is one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, but I am a servant of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. See, one of the things James and Jude, when Jesus they, when Jesus was still walking the face of the earth, they did not recognize him as Savior. Mm -hmm. Amen. They did not look at him as the Messiah. All they knew was, yes, that he was their mother's son. He was the one that was in the house with them. Yes. He was the one sometime that, if truth be known, he was the one that, uh, in the, as I look at my grandchildren there, it was probably the one that uh, Dekema and uh, uh, Zanisha would gang up against. <laughs> because that's how families do. That's how children are. Yes, he was the son of God, but he grew up a normal life just like you and I. Amen. As in the household, but his brothers did not recognize him Amen. as Messiah. And then on that day, when Jesus hung on the cross, because it's very interesting, <coughs> scripture says that Jesus looks at Mary mm -hmm. and said woman behold thy son mm -hmm. as he looked at the disciples whom he loved mm -hmm. and said behold thy mother mm -hmm. where was his brothers mm -hmm. where was those that was part of the family mm -hmm. scripture does not say whether they was there or not but one thing we know here scripture does bear the facts that James and Jude wrote a letter. Amen. James and Jude acknowledged Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yes. There comes a time in life where people may not recognize you for who you are right now. Yes. But don't worry about that. You keep doing what God has called you yes. to do. Right. And I promise you someday they'll recognize. Yes. Someday they have missed all the things that you have done. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? Attend a funeral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You find more things out about individuals at funerals than you ever do in your life. All while you was alive, they talked all about the bad things. But when they bring you in the church house and stretch you out before this pulpit, they want to talk about all the good things. If they did all those good things, can't you give them the flowers while they live? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here is you. A bond servant of Jesus Christ. And sanctified by God the Father. And preserved in Jesus Christ and called. And Jude says, Mercy unto you, peace and love be multiplied. Mm -hmm. You know, Church of the Living God, we talk about grace. We talk about the grace of God. But we too, we who are here, we need to learn a little mercy one for another. Yeah. We know, you know mercy, mercy, mercy. There are those who have offended us. There are those who have done us wrong. There are those who have stuck the knife in our back. There are those who will still scandalize our name. But we need to have a little mercy. We need to have a little mercy in our heart. Why? Why should we have mercy for them? Those who do those such things to us. Why? Because God has mercy for us. Amen. 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 God loves us. Yes. So mercy yes. and peace and love be multiplied. Multiplied in full measure. Don't keep subtracting away. But the older we get, the more we ought to understand that it was the grace and mercy of God that has brought us through. The older we get, we ought to understand that we need some peace. The older we get, we ought to love one another. For even when we were children, we used to fuss and fight. But five minutes later, we was back together. As we have gotten older, we fuss and fight. And five, fifty years later, we still don't want to come together. Yeah. Jude said, Beloved, when I get, give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful that the salvation is not just, it's not common in the way that it's just so, it's just so great that it doesn't have any value. But he's saying that everyone that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have something in common. And I tell you many times, that we ought not focus so much on our differences, but we ought to focus on what we have in common. And what we have in common is the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And if you have accepted him as Lord and Savior, it does not matter whether you are Baptist, whether you are Holiness, whether you are Methodist, whether you are Presbyterian. It does not matter what 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 uh, 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 denomination you may claim, but if you are a child of God, we have something in common, and we are to hold fast to that faith. Yes. Amen. You say, I've seen everything that's going on. It's need for me to write, need for me to write to you and to exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith. Which was once delivered unto the saints. Yes. We need to put aside everything else. That's right. And we need to contend for this faith. Amen. Amen. We need to come together. Amen. And those that are in this body, we need to come together yes. before we can come together with those in another body. Amen. Because we need to present a united front. Yes. One of the things, uh, well, Deacon, Deacon May was talking the other night about the book that I had given him. One of the things that they was talking about there in prayer, when they came together in unity, when they came together on one accord, when we come together in unity on one accord, we can do something because God will hear the unity that's in the midst. That's right. This is the reason why you notice many times in the scripture, even in the Old Testament and the New Testament, when the prophets called on God, when 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 uh, Peter prayed, when 
when Paul prayed numerous of times, there was those that was in the crowd that they put out. Why? Because when there is confusion in the midst, we stymie the Holy Spirit for us. But when things are on one accord, One can put a thousand to flight. Yes, right. And ten can put ten thousand yes. to flight. Yes. When we are in one accord. So we need yes. to get on one accord. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right here. Amen. Amen. I know that everything in my life may not be the way you want it to be. Everything in your life is not the way I want it to be. But when we come together and pray, we don't need not focus on our brother or sister, but we need to say, Lord, I come in the name of Jesus Christ and I'm holding fast to your word. It's not about us anymore. When we go down on bending knees, when we're calling on God, we're calling on the Father to move. That's right. Four. Say so we need to contend for the faith. Yes. We need to contend. Mm -hmm. One one translation say we need to fight. Mm -hmm. We need to stay steadfast. Yes. We need to fight. We we, we 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 need we need to fight for the faith. Yes. <laughs> we are too often fighting about the lifestyle of someone else when we need to be fighting about the faith. Mm -hmm. We need to be fighting about what God has done for us. Yes. We need not talk about everybody else, but if you want to talk about something, talk about what God is That's doing. right. Amen. I can easily talk about my wife, but I can talk about God. Amen. I can tell you that my wife loves me, but I can tell you that God loves me unconditionally. I was praying with my wife yesterday and I was asking her a question. I was, I was, I was really jumping with her about something else. I say, I say, honey, I say, I, I say, are you upset with me? She said, yes. I didn't know, I didn't know she was upset with me. I was trying to set up a punchline. But she's upset with me. Maybe sometimes she'll tell me why she's upset. I got an idea, but she ought to let it go because she can't do anything about it. Something that happened years ago, you can't do anything about it. When it comes back to your mind sometimes, it raised up. <laughs> you know how it is sometimes? You get that sour look on your face when you look at somebody else and you think about something that they did 30 years ago. Let what you need go. to do, let it go. That's right. Let it go and let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Yep. Let it go. Done. Gone. Yeah. If you want to think about something that was done years ago, think about over 2,000 years ago, yeah. Jesus right. died on the cross for your sins and my sins. And because he died, yeah. I did. Yeah. Why do we need to fight for this faith? Why do we need to earnestly contend? Why do we need to, to remember what was delivered unto the saints? Because there were certain men that were creeping into our fellowship unawares who were before of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They are secretly coming in. They are prepared with evil. They are trying to destroy church of a living God. If you're not careful, they will not just seep into the church, but they'll seep in through you. They'll come in through you. They'll use you as a vessel to help tear the church down. But I'm so glad one thing about it. Jesus said, told Peter, that upon this rock I will build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail. So I want to let you know that if we stand together, if we hold on to God's unchanging hand, yeah. guess what? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can put Satan to flight. Yeah. That's right. Oh, we got to get it. When you call on the name of Jesus, yes, Jesus. somebody say when you call on the name of Jesus, something happens. When you call on the name of Jesus, Satan got to flee. Church of the living God, 
the name of Jesus in a dark, dark world. It's just like a light switch in a dark room. When you turn that light switch on and you got power, light comes on and darkness vanishes. So when you call on the name of Jesus and you got power, Satan's got to flee. Notice there now I say when you got power. Because you remember those the, 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 that, 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 that individual in the New Testament that, that was talking about, I think the sons of Siva who came in and wanted to try to cast out demons. He looked and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but who are you? You can't go without power. You can't try something somebody else has tried. Just because you think that they did so well and you want to try it that way, you know there's, there's a disclaimer on a lot of shows on television, particularly some of these scientific experiences, some of these crazy things that they may do. They'll say, don't try this at home. Yes. <laughs> don't try this on your own. Amen. If you don't have the power of God behind you, there are some places you ought not, you bet not, you should not, and you must not go. Because I want to tell you that the enemy will jump on you. Amen. So here it is. Jude writes this letter. He puts it down. That we need to contend for this. <coughs> we need to work. We need to put in some effort. That word fights there this morning, it it may, may it doesn't necessarily mean that you got to put on the boxing gloves and get into the ring and spur up for, for 12 wide rounds, but it means that you ought to put some effort into it. It means that you ought to do something. Don't just be passive about it when somebody, yeah, we don't argue about the word of God. There's never a time that we need to argue about the word of God, but you need to stand and let men and women know that for God I live and for God I die. Church of a living God, why do we do this? Because Jude closed out this letter and he said now unto you, unto him, that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the seed in joy. Church of a living God, he's keeping us right now. Church of a living God, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter who you have to face, if you have the power, if you know that God is on your side, he is keeping you. I told you that I almost fell off my step. But there are those who will try to knock you down. There are some that will push you around. But I want to let you know that you close out with a very powerful message. It's a short book, but this hit, his closing is used in a lot of settings. Because now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. This doxology lets you know that God is there with you. God will prop you up. God will keep you from falling. He will present you faultless. Jesus will present you faultless before the presence of the glory with the seal in his joy. Church of a living God, how can he present us faultless when I am a sinner and a wretch undone? How can he present us faultless when I've done everything on every side? Well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Church of a living God, they are on the cross. Jesus, he died for your sins and my sins. They took him and whipped him all night long. They gave him 40 stripes, save one. The blood, the flesh was ripped off his back. Church of the living God, they gave him the cross to march up, go off the hill. They placed him on the cross. They nailed in his hand, nailed in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. Spirit of in his side, called him everything but the Son of God. He died for your sin and my sin. Because he died, he is able to present us faultless before the throne of his Father, Church of a living God. Not only will he present us faultless, 
but he joy in that. I know there in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it be thy will, remove this bitter cup. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He was in agony in the garden, but when he said, thy will be done, he took the joy, knowing that he was doing the will of God. So church of a living God, he went on the cross, he hung his head in a locks of his shoulder before giving up the ghost. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he gave up the ghost. They took him and laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed in that tomb of all night Friday. He stayed there all night Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, my Lord and my Savior, he got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We don't have to give him the power and the glory. He already has that because he has it. He is able to forgive us because he has it. He's able to heal us because he has it. He's able to protect us because he has it. He's able to keep us from falling. Goodbye and farewell, church of a living God. This is the last Sunday that we are going to gather in Anderson Chapel. Lord, be willing, as we know it, there's going to be some changes coming around. There's going to be some things that happen. But I want to tell you, even when the roof is taken off, even when the ceiling is repaired, even when more work is done, we have got to contend for the faith. It's not about the building. It's not about how it looks. It's not about the money that's spent, but it's all about the, the faith right now. It's all about Jesus died for your sins and my sins. And church of the living God, I'm so glad. So glad. So glad that he keeps me from falling. He keeps me from falling. He kept me from falling off that porch. He kept me from falling down and hurting myself. But church of a living God, not only that, when men and women talk about me, and I want to say something, he keeps me from falling. But sometimes when we say something, we say the wrong thing. But he keeps me from falling. He keeps my tongue. He keeps my mind. He keeps my eyes. He keeps my legs. He keeps my hand. He keeps me. Church of a living God, is he keeping you? Yes, he keeps you. Great mercy and peace be unto you, my father's children. The choir is going to give us a selection of their shorts. Now, we do extend the invitation to you this morning. If you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, we offer you Christ this morning. For Jesus died to save us all. There's not a one of us who have not sinned. And if you believe that you have not sinned, you're fooling yourself. And you think God of God. And church of the living God, and God is not a man that he should lie. For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But here today, Jesus is offered to you. He's presented to you. He's, the doors of the church are open. Not just the doors of Anderson Chapel, but the doors of the church of God. We are just one branch of time. You may accept Jesus here today, and you may join whatever church you want to join, whatever Zion, branch of Zion, whatever self-fellowship. But the important thing is that you do not leave out these doors knowing that you need Christ in your life, and you walked away from that opportunity today. If there's one today, maybe you have previously accepted, but you found yourself straight away. And today you want to come back. This is your hour, this is your opportunity. I need a break of me. Somebody 
morning this morning in these walls. We've been struggling all week long. I need a breakthrough. Can't find no help on your own. Fellowship one with another. 